Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Rootball Federation of America podcast. I believe this is episode nine. And we're going to be talking to two uh, newcomers, new but dominant newcomers to the sport of roofball. Uh, we're going to be talking with Darren and Damian Gibson. Now, they've played in two tournaments total. Uh, won the uh, Motor City Regional out in Michigan last year, as well as the final tournament of 2023, the U.S. Open. They performed very well in both. If you don't already know, they did They did really good. Uh, we'll talk about that more here soon. However, I was not able to attend either one of those tournaments, uh, so I've never seen them play in person. Uh, the venues couldn't be more different than the ability to score, so... Going from one to the next is uh, definitely a difference in there. But, Adam, you have seen them uh, every throw they've ever made in a ball tournament you've seen. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, one, two of the top newcomers, but also our guests on today's podcast. Yeah, so Damien was one of the ones that really made me realize that Roofball has moved into a different era. When I walked up to him as we got ready to play our first round game in Michigan, he said, "Hey, it's an honor to play against you." And I, in my, the, I was rolling, uh, laughing in my head, and I was like, "Sure." And it's going to be an honor to get my butt kicked by you, which is essentially what ended up happening. But they're they're <laughs> both really nice dudes. Uh, both obviously have really good arms. Uh, they've finished in the top three both tournaments they played. Vastly different roofs, and at the U.S. Open, of course, they'd never even thrown a ball on that roof. So to come out there against all a bunch of players who had been playing there for a couple of decades and really just kind of show us how to play the game we invented was pretty awesome. Uh, they also are probably the first of their group, essentially, that takes things very seriously as a sport. Like They're, they're having fun. They're lighthearted. But they were war- keeping their arms warm almost the whole day. They came out focused. Uh, they, they, they stayed focused even when they were being successful. They're like, I got to keep my head in it. This isn't over yet. So that's an interesting wrinkle, too, to, to roof ball is that they're, they are in it to win it from the get-go. Yeah, the competitive fire is there. For sure. Awesome. Well, uh, as I said, I haven't got to see them play in person, but hopefully uh, I'll see them at a tournament. They want you. They them. want you. <laughs> you know, and that takes me back to my younger days, too. But, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, at a tournament here relatively soon, uh, all three of us can be there, and I'll get a chance not only to see them, but to, to play against them. Should be fun. Uh, unless unless they beat me really badly, then it won't be so much fun. But that's all right. I, I know that's that happened not, before. It's not fun. <laughs> all righty. Well, with that, we'll jump to the interview. We have a couple special new era guests uh, today, uh, and we'll be talking to them shortly. Um, so, uh, not even shortly. I'm just going to dive into it. Uh, here we have Darren and Damian Gibson. Uh, the uh, the most recent uh, uh, U.S. Open champion, congratulations, and uh, 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 top three finishers uh, individually at the uh, Motor City uh, Regional. Uh, it was, uh, what was that? Was that our second non-Oregon Regional, Adam? Second one ever, yep. All right, all right. So um, the reason we had you both on, obviously your brothers, and if you can't tell through the video here or you're listening to the podcast, also twins. So I'm going to start off with a non uh, roof ball question. Obviously, we have your names here on screen, but is there like a distinguishing feature? Like if we ran into you in the streets that tells you guys apart? Uh, I think the the bet your best bet be maybe facial hair. Like I can grow a little <laughs> bit on my sides. Damien can't grow anything on his sides. <laughs> yeah, All right. pretty naked. All right. So Darren has a little bit of side facial hair. Damien, no dice. Nothing. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's dive into more roof ball stuff. Uh, obviously, you guys are in Ohio. Uh, we see the Cleveland at the Cleveland Indians. I was going to say Guardian sign, but you have the Indians there sign behind you. Uh, how did you even learn about roof ball? Oh well, it was definitely. Um probably back in the spring and maybe March or April. I was just sitting around watching YouTube being lazy. And that video popped up on my feed, checked it out, immediately texted Damien, probably within about a half hour saying, you got to watch this. He was immediately hooked as well. And uh, we just started watching, watching that whole, I think it was 08 tournament. Yeah. 08 tournament. And uh, I don't know if you guys had any other 
was out at that time, but we were really just focused on that 08 tourney. Yeah, it was it was right. the one that went viral, uh, and still is comparatively to all our other videos, Absolutely, the, yeah. the most the most watched one. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dan, yeah, you get a text from Darren, and you're like, "What is what is this? What is happening?" Right. Yeah, I immediately looked into it as soon as I got that text and ran through that video, and then you know, as soon as the other videos came up, we watched them all. I I, I think I've seen just about every video that's up. And then, you know, just really gained an interest in it. I think I rewatched a couple of them. Then I uh, found the website and uh, sent a little email in and heard back. And then I was invited to the uh, Michigan Regional. Well, that's a perfect segue, too. So you guys came up from from Cleveland to Livonia, outside Detroit. Played in our first, what I'll call our first ever sort of citizen-created roofball tournament, non-corporate, outside of Oregon. Uh, and Darren, you finished second there. Now, that was, as everybody is very well aware, pings were at an absolute premium that day. You had two. The whole day, you had two pings. But they were both in 10th innings that got you to the next round. So is clutchness just something that you do? Or what, what was the key in those moments for you? Oh, boy, gosh. Yeah, well, just to start, that was a, a pretty tough roof. Because, I mean, you throw it over, you're already down. It was hard to get a pick. But those late round pings i just knew, you know i just knew i get it so i went for it and now looking back on it i i probably could have tried for more pings and obviously i think i would have gotten them but i think the risk was just too much uh, and i didn't want to get bounced from that tournament too soon so damien so I don't, the more you guys hang out with adam you'll learn that he's like a roof ball stat head ask him anything right now uh and he'll he'll have an answer for you um not off the top of his head in the short order well the great but, thing uh, is if it isn't that, true no one knows anyway so. <laughs> that's true You're like oh really uh <laughs> but uh he let me know uh damien that you had 39 catches in a row to start your roof ball career but the 40th one that got away from you was in the 10th inning of the trophy round and because you missed it you you didn't get to move on is that like <laughs> i mean that that's got to suck one I'm, I'm sorry we've all had that happen or something similar <laughs> Ask Adam about his first championship. But, uh, like, what happened? Like, what was the thought process on that throw? Do you remember that at all? Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember being pretty upset afterwards. But uh, I think it just – I threw it up there just trying to get a, another catch, my 40th catch or whatever, and it just took the the wrong bounce. Like, it, had, it hadn't bounced like that the entire day, and then it just bounced all the way to the right down the side of the roof. Pretty much had no chance of catching it. So, oh, yeah, yeah, that one hurt. D Darren, you had a similar issue in the championship game. You and Jeff go 17 or 16 straight catches against each other. The longest extra inning match in roof ball history. In the seventh, he gets his catch and yours gets away from you. Do you remember what happened on that throw? Yeah. Um, that, that was in the, the, the final round, right? That's what you're talking about? Yeah, championship, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um... I don't know. I it just like Damien said, it took a funny bounce, you know, and then it just got past me. I and I just couldn't reach it. I think I might have got, I barely touched it. So Darren, earlier you were talking about, uh, you know, those two pings that you had, and like you you didn't really kind of go for it until you absolutely needed it. When you and Jeff were just sitting there trading catches back and forth, at any point in time, were you like? That's you know this is going to be the throw. I'm going to try to ping this, and if I you know if it goes over and over, I lost. But at least I'm going for it. Or was it just trying to keep up with him? I think I was just trying to keep up with him because I believe I chose to throw second. Yep. I believe so. So I was just you know if he's going to catch it, you know I got to catch it. And I wasn't go I was not at all thinking about going for that ball. It was just throw it up on the roof, catch it. I mean. As, as lame as that might sound, I just I was just that's what I had to do to sure that i could at least try to win obviously it didn't happen well, but i mean your name's already etched in some roof ball history which we'll talk about in a second but i'm pretty sure adam 17 throws for one game is also a record i would imagine especially for a championship oh absolutely yeah 17th yeah. i mean the, the record was 16 which was set earlier that day when darren was in a different throw off <laughs> and the record the record before that was 15 so yeah they were shattering records all all kinds of times that day so, Damien, or excuse me, Darren, you've had more throws than anybody in one tournament then, I'm assuming. 
Yeah. Tied, tied with, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. By himself, yeah, all by himself. Yeah. A record that may never be broken. <laughs> so I, I take not. it, Damien, I take it. So tell me about your general impressions that day. I take it you guys had a good time since you decided to keep playing after that. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was, I think my heart was just pounding the entire time, which made it even that much more fun. But uh, it was a nice little road trip up there. Uh, it was good to meet a bunch of different people. I remember some people that uh, came from Chicago. Bo, I don't know if you remember him. He was oh, yeah. a cool dude. It was great just, you know, getting to meet everybody, getting to be there, you know, instead of watching it from a TV. Well, let me ask you guys, I we did the uh, sort of your Rupa origin story, but neglected to ask you about sort of your origin stories in terms of sports. So what did you guys play growing up? How far did you get with it? What were your favorite sports? That kind of thing. Take it away, Damien. <laughs> Thanks. Um, pretty much it's just gonna be played the, the traditional. Yeah, it's going to be the same answer for both of us, but uh, pretty much played the traditional three, baseball, basketball, and football growing up. Um, played in high school and then eventually played football in college at the D3 level. Oh, wow. Uh, we both played receiver. It was just a small school in Hi uh, Hiram, Ohio. We were terrible. In my four years, I went two and 38. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what propelled my uh, – <laughs> that's what propelled me to roof ball. <laughs> That's why now, you're not in the NFL right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, as wide receivers, did you have any gadget plays where you would throw back to the quarterback or anything like that? I'm just trying to figure out, like, the throwing. Right. You know. uh, not in college, but in high school, we had a play that was named after us. It was called the Twin Dragon Reverse Pass, where one of us would get the reverse, and then the other twin was an option to throw to. Coolest play name ever. Yeah. I think we have right. a name for the episode, Adam. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. All right, so you have a good time in Livonia. So you got the invite because you were top three. You got the invite to the U.S. Open. When did you guys know for sure you were coming out? And almost more importantly, when did you decide your mode of transportation to come out there? Well, I'd say we knew for sure we were going to come out when you told us in Livonia we were we're invited. <laughs> um, and then as far as driving, I think we just prefer to drive. I don't really uh, care to fly, though I think we'll have to fly out in May. But uh, I don't know, just driving out there. We've, we've gone, we've taken a road trip out west before, but that was on I-80. This time we took, what was that, 94 up? Oh, all the way up, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know, it's just cool, you know, checking out checking out the road. You know, I've never been through Montana at all, and that was crazy. How long was the trip? Too long. It was like yeah, 36 was hours of total driving. 36 hours of driving, 2,500 miles. I remember one of the nights we just slept in the car, like at a rest stop in North Dakota. We took all our like clothes and like boarded up the windows. It was in Damien's Toyota Corolla. Well, well this, gonna, this is going to be the story. Down, you, so. you guys are going to tell this story one day, like 20 years from now, when <laughs> the world champions, when the contestants for the world champions gets uh, brought in by private jet. You're going to be sitting there going, we slept at a red rest stop in North Dakota to make the U.S. Open back in 23. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be a great time to look back on. Yeah, it reminds me of a, a John Daly story, you know, yeah, driving yeah. around to a golf event, to a golf event, and then bam, major champion, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, so you drove out there, uh, you got to Beaverton, Oregon, of all places in the world, and you, you pull up there to Willis Park. Like, what's the first impressions? I mean, is that, Damien, you said you watched all those videos, some of them more than once. Like, did it seem what you saw in video? Was it different? Like, first impressions? I mean, it was just just as cool of a venue as as it's as it appeared on tv it was really great to be there and to like to see people in person and to know wow it, it is real you know i saw lauren what's his last name works yeah works yeah, yeah. yeah and you know, i i immediately shook his hand and said what an honor to be to be in your presence you know it was just great to see everybody you know Susan. <laughs> what did Willis he say back to you i think he just laughed yeah i think he's kind of shocked <laughs> Well, that's probably the first and maybe last time anybody will ever say that to Lauren. But uh, <laughs> that's just that's coming from me. <laughs> so, Damien, you go out there and you get your first game under your belt. You put up a fifty-five, pretty strong debut. 
did the roof just speak to you? What'd you like about that surface, the whole venue? Uh, I don't know. I guess when it comes to, uh, just competition, I just, I dial in and just try to do my best and, and compete at a high level. I was playing against Nate, which, you know, that was a very competitive person to play against. And I just knew I had to just keep it up and, and throw my best. And luckily I somehow I pulled that out and beat him by a couple points, maybe five or six points. Yeah. Um, so Darren, during that tournament, like, as I mentioned before, you made history a couple different ways. So one, um, we've had more than one fifteen from one player in one game before one time, I got right there and, but never back to back. So first time ever there. And then of course, all time high score of 77, I mean, can you take us through that game? Was there any thoughts? Were you even aware of what a record might be? Well, definitely was not aware of the record at all um, until I heard, I think I started hearing Adam in the back background saying I was getting close. But uh, <clears throat> the two back-to-back 15-pointers, -back, uh, that was ridiculous. I, I definitely was not trying for that. I think I said that back uh on that day that I wasn't trying for it. Um, I wasn't even trying for any of the arounds. I was just, every time I went up there, strictly just throwing it at that pole. And, you know, you do the math, you hit you hit the pole seven times and you catch it. And, you know, that's 42 points right there. Right? Is that the right math? Yeah, yeah you're right. You're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, just trying to hit that pole. And then when I, I think... Hmm. What did I get on the? I got an around on the last throw, meaning, and I caught it, meaning I had to have been at sixty-seven. Then, You're, yeah, sixty-six going into the last row. And then who? What was the record though? The previous record? Seventy-four. Okay, so yeah, I needed that. I needed that around, and I, I think I remember Adam. You actually might have came up to me and said, "Just you know, go for it or something." And I definitely, I definitely tried for the around on that one, though. That's for sure on that last one. But yeah. so the crowd reaction was crazy. Like I knew that people were kind of dialed in, but when you were going back, were you surprised by just the, the general outpouring of happiness and cheers when you got that record? I, I was definitely a bit surprised. I mean, obviously I'm sure there would be some sort of a pause for breaking a record, but I was very shocked. You know, I turned around, I believe it was Shane Alberta who I was competing against him and Michael Angelo in that round. And Shane, you know, just, Quickly gave me a high five, and then all the high fives, high high fives started coming in. It was crazy. So, uh, so Damian, you you took third in the U.S. Open as well as the Michigan tournament. Um, so your brother here beat you both times. Like, what was the drive back? What was that next thirty six hours like? <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't too bad because I was just talking up the whole talking him up the whole ride back. You know, telling him how good he did. But I. Uh, I'm definitely looking to get some revenge in the near future. Well, I was going to ask, Excellent. historically with you guys, are you are you a good match for each other? Are there things beyond sports? Are there things in life where one of you tends to be better than the other one? Are you all basic? Are you, how similar are you? How different are you in the grandest way possible? Let's spend the next half hour breaking that down. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's some things that we're each individually better at. Like I, and he would agree I'm a probably a better basketball player, but he's a better runner. Like he's got a little bit more endurance than me. We also like to do long distance running. But I um I agree with that. However, for the past summers, me and Damien do a best of seven one on one basketball tournament where one day we'll play a game. It's like first to seven. And then we'll wait like two more weeks and play another game. I beat him this summer in that best of seven. So just putting that out there. He finally beat me. You can see how important that is to him. He had a break. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so 23 was Darren's year, it sounds like. I guess yeah. so, yeah. But for the for the most part, we're pretty pretty equal at things, you know, when it comes to anything, not just sports. We're pretty on the same page. All right, so Darren, you guys both sent me postcards. Thank you for that. And I wanted to read a little something that Darren wrote here because I think Derek will enjoy it. Uh, it starts out, uh, Livonia was fun. Beaverton was another level. I look forward to many more tournaments. Scoring the 77 was unexpected. Winning the tournament was planned. Mm -hmm. And he says, I hear some fans saying, but Weber wasn't there. Well, I guess we'll have to give the fans <laughs> what they want. Derek, your response. 
Yeah, I mean, I was just going to ask, as Darren, like, did it really feel real, you know, if the defending champion wasn't there? It, well, it, it, <laughs> cer it certainly felt real. Um, and it, I mean, it honestly still does. But I know, like, in some of the comments, people were saying, I think they literally said, but, you know, it doesn't count if Weber wasn't there. <laughs> but um, so obviously the fans want to see, you know, you and I in the same tournament. And we'll have to give the fans what, you know what they want well let's let's talk about it. the next tournament is the world championships it is in may will you two be there 100 percent, without a doubt without a doubt i think i emailed adam back i was like two words i'm in <laughs> very jordan-esque of you i don't even know if you know that reference when jordan came back to the nba but that was he just he just sent a yeah the facts just said i'm back right Right, he said I'm back. Now, what I thought I was seeing if you text is I said two words, I'm in. Yeah. But remember back in Livonia, you asked me what I thought of Jeff Chambers. I said one word, relentless. So it was just a little play on that too. Which he turned into his slogan too. Oh yeah, he, he ran with that for sure. Well, <laughs> separate issue, will we see you guys back in Livonia this summer? Without a Definitely. doubt. Definitely. That's a oh, much yeah. shorter ride. Might even see us in Grand Rapids, maybe, if that's there doable. And, and in Lancaster, Ohio, home of the RFA Cup in 2024 as well. Definitely. Oh, the yeah, Midwest we'll is taking over. Let, let me ask you guys a, a question, yeah. a totally unfair question. Why is why does the Midwest love roof ball so much? What's Is there something special about the Midwest that makes it roof ball friendly? Darren, you can take that one. I don't know. Maybe uh... – I don't know. It must be something to do with the roofs out here, you know? A little bit more sturdier out here. <laughs> the good roof ball sure, roofs. I, people love it, I guess. You know, they love football out here in general. So throw a roof onto it. Yeah. Right. Like Jeff said, you know, we like throwing footballs at random things and drinking beers. I was going to say beer in the hand, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely for Jeff. Were you guys expecting when you came out here? I mean, I, I don't think you were expecting all three of you to do as well as you did. But how unexpected was the overall performance of the three of you? Do you think to you guys, you you two and Jeff? Well, that was. I mean, I don't even know. Go for it. It was it was definitely crazy that we all three ended up in that final, you know, in the medal round, just like in Livonia. Um, I mean, I was. I wasn't like I said. I, I me, me or Damien, we wanted to win that. You know, driving out there, we wanted to win that tournament. The fact that we all three made it to that medal round, it was very surprising. You know, and I, and I, I before the tournament started, you know, I was telling myself, you know, I could get knocked out early. So the fact that we all three made it was very impressive. I guess. Yeah, I don't even yeah, know I the odds of us to the final round, but it, it was incredible. Yeah, and I think I mean obviously I was not there in Michigan. Um, and I, you know, I watched that tournament a few times and totally understand the roof was completely different than target was hard to hit, but the scoring from that, uh, and you know, Adam will tell you, and I'll, I'll be honest as possible. I looked at, it, I was like, wow, that was not the best showing, not the most, <laughs> uh, uh, high scoring tournament, you know, those scores that came from that wouldn't, you know, wouldn't really play in, in a tournament here. Uh, and then, uh, so I was, I, I couldn't be there during the US open, but I was getting text updates from Adam and I was trying to check the live stream when I could. Uh, and, and I was like, wait, what is, what is happening right now? These scores are not only like a normal score. I mean, they're extremely high and obviously the record, but you know, other like Damien starting out with a 55, like nobody, nobody does that, uh, for their first time on that roof. Uh, and most people don't do that ever, let alone, you know, their first time out. So the scores you guys were throwing and including Jeff in this as well, I mean, were very impressive. So congratulations. And I, again, look forward to, to meeting you guys in person in May. Well, yeah, and Damien, Damien's 55, he scored in the first game, was more points than Jeff scored in the entirety of winning the tournament in Livonia. So okay. uh, so you guys are, are you're, I don't know if you know, but you're developing a little bit of a fan base. I think that you're developing a little bit of a following. And I could easily see the newcomers to Roofball kind of adopting you guys as we don't want to support the old guard. We want to get the new guys. So <laughs> we'll start We'll start with Darren and then move on to Damien. Your messages to the, to your fans. Oh, well, I, okay, I have fans. Uh, <laughs> my message to them is, uh, viewers, you know, just soak it in. But, uh, 
this could be a long and glorious fall career. But if you're going to come play, and you're going to come try to come one of these majors, better bring your A game. Damien, how about you? Uh, I just want to thank all my fans for the support. Um, just please continue supporting me, and I promise I will get that major eventually. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, Adam, anything you wanted to? No, oh, no, I just, uh, I'm, I'm glad we could get you guys on. Thanks for uh, your, the efforts you've gone to so far to play roof ball. It's been a lot of fun playing against you guys and watching you guys achieve what you already have. And we're really looking forward to playing a lot more roof ball with you in the years to come. Yeah, thank you. I just want to say, I appreciate you, Adam, for, you know, trying to take the sport as far as you can. Same with you, Derek. I know you're his right-hand man. I'm just excited to see what happens. Likewise. All right. Well, Darren, go Indians. Damien, up to no good in Lakewood there on your shirt. I'll see you both at the uh, 2024 uh, World Championships, where the defending champion will be eager to meet you guys. And uh, I hope you all have a good one. Sounds good. Can't wait. Yeah, appreciate you guys having us on. Take it easy.